three. This is the third part of a series examining the recent literature on strength training. Then comes the question of aside from being stronger, are there any other benefits? Stamatakis and colleagues in a meta-analysis does strength training promoting exercise confer unique health benefits, a pooled analysis of 11 population cohorts with all-cause cancer and cardiovascular mortality endpoints recently published in October 2017, found out something that simply astounded me. I'm going to quote from the paper. Participation in any Strength training exercise was associated with a 23% reduction in all-cause mortality and a 31% reduction in cancer mortality. They also made some interesting, more detailed findings. First, when they compared strength to just strength training, they found the outcome of strength, rather than just the participation in strength training, was associated with a reduced mortality. They also mentioned that a higher volume and perceived difficulty was associated with a higher reduction in all cause and cancer mortality. A previous study found, and I quote, previously in 8,700 and some adults, participation in 8 to 14 of uh, strength training per month was associated in a reduction with all cause mortality with no benefit observed at higher frequency. But the new analysis points to a higher volume and intensity yielding greater protection. Their final conclusion was strength training over and above the approximately two times per week and exercising to muscle failure yield even higher benefits. They concluded that more benefits were to be gained above the aerobic guidelines with the addition of strength training. And when you do it above that level that's currently recommended, the benefits are even higher. Their baseline was equivalent to 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity activity aerobically and strength training two times per week. I'm probably never going to meet the aerobic guidelines, but I know I can meet the strength training guidelines. Behind disease and discomfort, there's an overall slowdown in activity behind which is often the culprit of inflammation. In fact, that's how I started on my resistance training program. If you remember, I did a blood test with Inside Tracker, and my inflammation markers were high. And they recommended a once a week strength resistance session training, a resistance training session. Chupel and coworkers associated inflammation with cognitive impairment. They actually looked at elastic band training in 32 women between the ages of 82 to 89, I'm rounding, and all of these women had mild to moderate cognitive impairment. They split the group into two. Half did 68 sessions of exercise over 28 weeks and half did not. They evaluated blood counts, cytokine levels such as TNF-alpha and interleukin-10, as well as physical abilities. They were trying to figure out if exercise at an appropriate level for the population could be a non-pharmacological intervention for both reducing inflammation and preventing immunosenescence and addressing cognitive decline. TNF-alpha is also associated with muscle wasting. TNF-alpha and C-reactive protein, CRP, increased in the control group over time. These are markers of inflammation and can also contribute to neuronal damage. The group that did the exercise did not have their levels raised of these damaging cytokines. The exercising group also decreased their leukocyte count and also increased the hemoglobin levels. Low hemoglobin levels are associated with lower cognition. There are a lot of nuances in this study that I won't bog you down with, but overall, the exercising group improved cognition and anti-inflammatory markers, even as a group experiencing some cognitive impairment. Forty and colleagues looked at an older group and markers of inflammation as well in their study, load specific mediating effects of resistance training in older community dwelling persons, male and female, between the age of 63 and 73, and I quote from their conclusion, we suggest that exercising until volitional fatigue, volitional fatigue is the main trigger for exercise-induced immune responses. However, training at high external load 
also increase anti-inflammatory IL-1RA in male participants, which might imply additional benefits in combating low-grade inflammation. They also go into a lot more detail about cytokines if you're interested. This is Judy Chalice with Lifespan and Longevity. Please remember to subscribe. You don't want to miss the next segments.